Yo, 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 what's up all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v 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 vipers doing out there? Mrs. Weedman. Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? I'm great. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. You want to know why? Why? We're using new mics. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we got fancy new equipment. Fancy new equipment. Some of it's hooked up. We're still learning on the rest. But yeah, I'm super stoked to record with these new mics. So hopefully everybody out there in the world is smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. And we are about to get normal, aren't we, Mrs. Weedman? Yeah, we are. We are smoking some brandy pie given to me by my good friend, Big Earl. And we smoked this on Sunday with Mr. G when he stopped by, and this was phenomenal. These nugs are just beautiful. Like, just, I, I mean, tons of trichomes, good-looking color, the feel of it, the smell of it. It's just a phenomenal high. I don't have a lot of information on this. I could just tell you this. Mrs. Weeman and I smoked this brandy pie, and she sat at the the dining room table for like two hours and didn't move. And I sat in the basement trying to work on the podcast. And for like a good, like 30 minutes, I, I caught myself staring at the screen, <laughs> staring at the screen. And I was just like, it was so good. The high was so body melting. So brandy pie. And we're smoking this tonight, uh, out of a, Real Spliff Society palm wrap that was given to me by our good friend Briggs. So uh, another phenomenal uh, way to smoke out of these these palm wraps that the Spliff Society gives us is they're just so clean and nice to smoke out of, and they burn so slow, and they're just a beautiful smoke. So, Ms. Wee Man, yeah, like that shit up. Let's go. <laughs> All right. You've been, you've been, you don't take you don't ask like, me twice. We're like three minutes in the show, and you haven't even started smoking yet. I uh, know. <laughs> what's wrong? With, what's wrong with me? <laughs> And Yuki decided to join us tonight. She's laying down beside me. Hi, Yuki girl. How you doing? <laughs> so, uh, well, while we're smoking, I'm going to talk about Succession. Yeah. We caught the episode last night, and I tell you what, boy, oh boy, I was drilled in, I mean, I was also very stoned. But I was so drilled into that show that I think you tried to talk to me at one point, and I don't even think I heard you. You were asking me a question, but I was so it was such you were, a yeah. You just it really sucked you in. This oh, episode. it was a serious episode with a lot of like underlying things moving around and twist plots. And uh, poor Tom, he always gets the dirty end of the stick. Yeah, Tom. Tom got what he got himself. <laughs> I mean, come on. He's, he's a Tom. player. He's, he's Tom. Tom. He's Tom. But I mean, what a just a turn of events of this whole thing at this party they were throwing, and it was just crazy, crazy, crazy. What do you think, Ms. Wee Man? I think I'm gonna smoke the whole thing myself. <laughs> it's really good. I need a major, major normalization. <laughs> <laughs> so can I just smoke it all? No, I'll share in a minute. In you a minute. should share. So, so what did you think about Succession last night? It was a jam-packed episode. It was definitely a heavy hitter. And you said poor Tom. I mean, Tom, poor Tom. If you watch the I'm show, I'm being very sarcastic. Yeah, <laughs> you you feel sorry for him as a human, but as a businessman, he knows exactly what the fuck he was doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I don't feel sorry for him. Because he's a player just like all of them are. But it was definitely a uh, a big episode. Is there another episode before the end of the season? This is the last season. This is the last season. We don't know how many episodes are I don't left. know. Probably 12, I hope. Because I don't want the season to end. I know. Because it's so good and there's so much twist and plots and all this good stuff going on. So if you haven't watched it, it is the final season. So I would uh, I would definitely get, on board. get it on good. your list of watching um, also the kids, we haven't watched it yet, but I saw that, uh, the great British baking show for kids is back. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So we'll watch that afterwards. Yeah. That was that's a just good a one. good, easy watch. Yeah. So easy. It's so just, pleasant. You don't have to really follow much. You just get super baked and you just enjoy it. And uh, it's just a great show. So what else going on? Anything? We just work a lot. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, maybe a little too much, but yeah. it's all for the good. All work and no play makes Mr. Wee Man a dull boy. Our weather's finally getting better here in oh, Chicago. Everything's beautiful. green. 
We're having decent weather, not amazing. It's not consistently spring yet. It still wants to be cold, and it still wants to be winter on it's occasional May. days. It's, it's May. May. Yeah. So it's it would time. be nice if we would just be, like, consistently in the 60s? 70s would be 70s? nice. 70s? Yeah, it would be nice. You know, but we're not. Yeah. yeah. And also, to what? all you mothers out there. Mother's Day is coming Mother's up. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. By the time up. this launches... Uh, it'll be approaching the weekend, yes. so everybody hopefully has some fun plans for their moms. And I'm just going to tell you something. Moms don't want to do dishes on Mother's Day. Yeah, do the dishes. So do the dishes <laughs> and cook. Cook for mom. Like, literally, don't let her get up. Or let her get up, but don't let her be in the kitchen. Right. 100%. Unless she has just a cup of coffee in her hand or a mimosa and she's just chilling. Or a joint. <laughs> or a Bloody Mary. Yeah. And a, and a joint. You better have joints rolled for Mother's Day. Yeah. Or edibles if she doesn't smoke. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. So happy Mother's happy Day. Happy Mother's Day, moms. To all you moms out there in the world. We love you. If it wasn't for moms, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty factual. <laughs> It's hundred I mean, percent. Yeah, that's, that's really what it comes down to, <laughs> right? It is. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah, and I will say the the uh, Spliff Society wraps are the pre rolls are really really nice. They yeah. do they they burn really nice and slow and even. And the smoke is just so pleasant. You don't get, you know, you don't get the big harsh coughing. It's right. just, it's, it's just nice, such it's just a smooth a good, smoke. Good smooth. You smoke. can take some big, pretty blazy hits. Yeah. And not even feel a burn. No, not at all. It's great. So thank you, Big Earl, for yep. the brandy pie, and thank you, Briggs from the Real Split Society. We appreciate all the goodies we always get on the show. We do adore, and I think you could, you can find uh, the Real Split Society uh on their website so and check out if you're looking forward to some of their raps so uh they're pretty pretty damn good they're on so, instagram they're on all the yeah, social media yeah. platforms. and briggs is a great dude too so yeah. um local business yep support local family businesses it's how this country survives so what else anything else going on uh is that a trick question no oh no. Uh, Yuki got to play with her sister this week. Oh, yes. Yuki and yeah. her sister Stormy. So they got to play. It was yep. pretty funny in the beginning because they hadn't seen each other all winter. So Stormy was like showing her teeth like, <laughs> I'm the boss. Yeah, she's a bully. And so she had her fur up and her teeth out. And then after maybe like four or five minutes, it was like all... Just yeah. playing. I remember she and the shoved, two of them just ran. Yeah, and ran I remember and she shoved Yuki one time, and Yuki said, "Enough yeah. is enough." Yeah, and she gave like her snipped little, at her gave or her a gave push. her a nudge, and <laughs> Yuki yelped, and then was like, "You know what, bitch? This is how it's gonna go. I'm done with your shit." Fucking yeah, bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling a little feisty right now. You are a little feisty. Yeah. When so, you when you're with somebody, yeah, for 29 years, as it was May 8th. Yes. Hey. Happy 29 years. Is that yesterday? Years. That was yesterday. Wait, I gotta put my eyeballs on. We're Whoa, not, it's the ninth. We're together for <gasps> 29 years as of May 8th, and uh, I waited to today to, to talk to you about it. I didn't say yesterday. We yeah, knew. but we've known each other for 29 years? 29 years? years we've been together. We're no, married, we've been married for 20. 28 years. Uh, and we've married 28 years. It will be yeah. 28 years. I know that. And together 29 years. 29. Yes, we met May 8th, and the rest was history. Yeah, I guess you could do some quick math there and realize we <laughs> we um, we worked quickly. <laughs> yes, we worked very quickly. We got we got right to the point. Yeah, it was all over. Baby, wedding, house, yeah. like all in here. Here we are, twenty nine years later. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think you know if I'm in a mood. Yep, I know it. You, you might know <laughs> just a little bit. For all for all you married couples, or or um, if you live with somebody, or if you're partnered with somebody. And you've been with somebody for a long enough time, you know when there's something wrong. You feel it. And Mrs. Weeman knows when there's something wrong with me, and I know when there's something bugging her. I just it might not be about me or might not be about her, but there's something that that is just like you just know because you walk in the house and you just sometimes feel like you're walking on eggshells. You're just like one wrong move <laughs> and something's gonna go off. <laughs> I don't. I don't lash out at you. No, no. You just. You just know wrong. Just that I just need to vent. Yes. Yes. You just have to hear me. Yes. Of course. That's what Rage. I'm here for. Yes. I'm always here about all my. I got you. Shit. I got you. So. Yeah, you do. You do. You're a good listener. I am very good listener. Even if you're not listening. I listen. No, I listen. <laughs> you no, you see, listen to a, majo a majority. There's a difference of it. between hearing somebody and listening to somebody, and I always listen. Right. Sometimes I might not hear what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. Sometimes you don't hear me. 
because there's something. But that's normal. That's normal. But I always listen. Right. Yeah, sometimes I don't hear exactly what you're saying, meaning like I don't understand it or why you or feel like this what way. Or what my, my right. perspective is. Right. Right. But I listen and yeah, I try to un- I try to hear, but yeah. sometimes you just get a little confused and you just, I don't understand it. You just. You just, mean you get a little confused. I do, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not confused. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I mean. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you just need to listen. That's yeah, all. That's just, what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm a good head on the shoulder. Just need you to listen. A good punch in the face or a good. I really a good don't listener. want you to say anything. Like, <laughs> like, give me advice. I don't. I don't. I learned, but I learned no, that. Right. It took a it long. Just, I just need to like. I need, just need to talk it out. Yes. And I gotta. And I just shake my head. Shake I my head. And I go, uh huh. Spill the beans. Yep. Get it out, and then I move on. So for so all I'm your good. partners, spouses. So, yeah. When I'm in one of those modes, together, like I gotta dump some shit. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. Yep, I do. <laughs> I got there today. <laughs> Guess what? Weed just 100% flipped my script. Yeah, it did. I am A-OK I right now. It. I feel you. I feel like the weight has lifted. You feel somebody, though, when you're with them for so long. And I think uh, uh, there was one time, I think I, maybe like seven, eight years ago, I think I told you, I feel you. I feel you. Well, not- yeah, you. Yeah, you did. I'm like, all right, what do you mean, weirdo? What are you saying? It's <laughs> <laughs> like I feel I love you. like I, I feel you. Like I feel the inside when something's wrong. And I think I always have, but like I finally just wanted you to know, you know, like where I feel you. And I think like you said you, like I got you. Yes. I could feel when you're hurting. I could feel when you're happy. I could feel when you're when you're when you're pissed off. I could feel when you're sad. I could feel when you want to punch the wall. I just feel you. I've still never done that. No, but you put a sledgehammer through the wall. Really weakly. It was poor. <laughs> I, it was. I really thought, like all my life, I thought I could like really whack something with a freaking sledgehammer. That was a twenty-five. That was a twenty-pound or a ten-pound sledgehammer to, to yeah. pull back and go on the wall. And do we were knocking down the wall. And so we we after the five-year plan became a ten-year and then fifteen or seventeen or nineteen-year plan before we renovated our home. Yep. You know, we thought. We're going to do it in a year. Yep. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, we finally got to do it. And so it was such a long time coming that we had this one wall that separated two rooms that it just needed to come down. <laughs> and so the contractors were like, oh, here, you you get to you get to hit the wall. And I was I was strong at that time. We were yeah. still exercising yeah, like regularly. very regularly. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like, you know, not happening I so much. I think you'd pick up the sledgehammer and you'd fall back. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ah! thought I was just gonna whack that. Now there are different weights, yes. and so these guys were like big, beefy, like Polish Highlander carpenters. Yep. These guys were amazing. They were the most fantastic framers, and this is what they do all day. They just swing hammers and tools. So it was enough. That it was probably a very weighted sledgehammer, right? To to uh, give myself it was, a little. It was. But I thought I was just gonna get up there and do this, like you know. Instagram worthy, slam it through the wall, and <laughs> all the drywall comes down in the plaster. But it didn't go that well. I you made did. like I made like a dent. You know, you you put a hole through the wall. Did I? Yeah, you did. We got a picture of it. I don't think it fully. Broke. No, it went through the wall. Yes, yeah? but it was very weak. Not all the way through both no, sides. No, just the one just side. Just the side. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> oh shit! Good uh, stories. I how love did we it. get on that? Just because we're stoned and we're talking. Trying to get li- lighten your mood up a little bit before we yeah. really get going. You feel better? Oh, like punching walls. I yes. said I've never punched a wall, and you're like, oh, but you threw a sledgehammer to <laughs> one. Wow. Derailed. Brandy Brew. Pie. Bring it back. Bring it back. Brandy Pie. You ready to get, the show? You ready to get the show started? Yeah. Let's get rocking Let's and it. rolling. Whew. We've talked so much about cannabinoids. We've talked a ton about terpenes we've only we've only scraped the surface of flavonoids and it's been a very long time since i even talked about it but i was researching some articles and i thought this was really good so what are flavonoids flavonoids are part of a larger group of chemical compounds called polyphenols and are found in plants fruits and vegetables have in mind that not all polyphenols are flavonoids despite their similarities There are approximately 4,000 different flavonoids and up to a total 8,000 polyphenols, meaning that all flavonoids are polyphenols, but not all polyphenols are flavonoids. Confused yet? Mm. I am, Mm -hmm. because I was tongue-tied and twisted there for a second. As mentioned, flavonoids are found in most plants and are responsible for the different colors, smells, and flavors. 
plants have while plants have while also being important in plant protection and reproduction. Reproduction. Name that movie. Hurry, name it. I don't know. Grease. Come oh, jeez. This happens because some flavonoids emit a strong odor that keeps away bugs and other flavonoids emit an odor that certain pollinators seek after. This helping in reproduction and spreading seeds. Flavonoids also influence the aroma and flavor of cannabis, but unlike terpenes and cannabinoids, flavonoids are present in other parts of the cannabis plant, such as stems, leaves, seeds. So despite being usually disposed of, the leaves can be used to make super healthy smoothies. And you've heard Mr. Weedman say that, and I just did a trim, and I love my weed smoothies. Apart from being beneficial for plants, flavonoids are also beneficial for humans. As it turns out, just like terpenes, flavonoids have anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antioxidants, and antimicrobial properties. See, this whole plant, it's the whole plant, everybody out there, all you burner stoners and potheads. There's no concrete data to confirm it, but scientists say that clear indication is a lower incidence of chronic disease, such as coronary heart disease, hypertension, and stroke in regions where people consume a lot of fruits and vegetables, such as the Mediterranean region. Most common flavonoids in higher concentrations than terpenes, uh, flavonoids are actually found in higher concentrations than terpenes. Scientists have already found over 20 different flavonoids in cannabis basically divided into three main groups, flavanols, flavanons, isoflavonoids, and anthokinins, among others. Flavanols are a group of flavonoids that includes Kemperfall and quercetin, both of which are these chemicals have antioxidant properties that can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Ongoing studies are going on right now. Some flavanols, though, you can find in also some fruits, onions, and vegetables. Onions, kale, lettuce, tomato, berries, apples, grapes, and tea. So, Mrs. Wee Man, you eat an apple a day. That's why it keeps the doctor away because you get a lot of flavanols in you that's good yeah. for anti inflammatory yeah. and cardiovascular disease, and it's an antioxidant. See? Also, also get good poops. Oh, uh, fla- all of that. Flavanones are also antioxidant properties, but the main benefit is that they help get rid of molecules that can damage your cells, potentially protecting you against cancer and several diseases. The flavonoid can also reduce cholesterol and offers anti-inflammatory properties. So all you people out there that are home growers, take those leaves and juice them. Make it, you know, just juice them. Make a tea out of them. Do what you got to do. But also if you don't smoke cannabis and you listen to the show because you like us, thank you, by the way, flavanons are also found in mandarins, lemons, oranges, lime, kumquats, clementines, grapes, and grapefruit. And then you have anthocyanins. Na, 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 na. The flavonoid is believed to have both anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties and is mostly found in the following foods. Black currants, eggplant, cabbage, blueberries, strawberries, cherries, cranberries, blackberries. All those berries are in my fruit smoothie every morning. So they are also probably most popular flavonoid because it gives plants, fruits, and vegetables their distinct blue, purple, and red colors. Striking colors alongside these pigments also play an important role in plant biology by reflecting specific wavelengths of light. They serve as a natural plant sunscreen that protects tissues from the detrimental effects of UV radiation. Furthermore, They also help to regulate plant growth and also work as antioxidants, protect cells against free radical damage. There's a bunch of free radicals running around. Just be careful out there. Make sure you take your anthocyanins. Um, Outside of plants, anthocyanins are are a form of an important part of the human diet. Ongoing studies suggest that they possess antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties that protect our cells from oxidation that's linked to DNA damage and a host of diseases including cancer. These colorful molecules are also linked to improving cognitive function and may play an important role in maintaining brain health and function as we age. Isoflavonoids play a role in metabolism and hormonal balance because they have phytoestrogenetic effects that mimic estrogen, meaning that isoflavonoids could benefit pre- and postmenopausal women in combating conditions and symptoms caused by estrogen deficiency. During menopause, levels of estrogen naturally decrease. This shift in hormones gives rise to a number of symptoms that can affect the woman's quality of life, including reduced bone density, mood swings, and hot flashes. 
Isoflavonoids might help to manage these symptoms in some women by acting as a plant-derived estrogen substitute. Because of these compounds work in a similar way in the body, it could help to reduce the severity of menopause symptoms. You can think about this in the way THC and other cannabinoids mimic the natural endocannabinoids found in the body. So in isoflavonoids, that you can, they're also found, so if you don't smoke, uh, also found in soybeans, chickpeas, raisins, pistachios, lentils, peanuts, fava, 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 fava beans, and potatoes. Other flavonoids uh, mentioned, scientists believe there are 4,000 flavonoids, but we still don't know all of them and know very little about the ones we know now. Anthotidins, flavonoids, flavanols, flavanones, and isoflavonoids are the main flavonoids known, but there are other flavonoids that even though we know they exist and where they exist, we don't know how much about them. So there's two more, cathedins and catechlones. These flavonoids are found in bananas, apples, pears, peaches, among other fruits, and offer antibacterial, anti-cancer, and antioxidant properties, but more research is needed in order to understand them. Canaflavins, apart from the flavonoids mentioned in the above, above article, exclusive to cannabis plants. They are canaflavin A, B, and C. Canaflavins were first identified in 86, 1986. Researchers found them as anti-inflammatory properties to be 30 times stronger than aspiring A. Couples, uh, a couple of years ago, research figured out how canaflavins are made in the cannabis plant, and according to the study published in 2020, claimed that canaflavins could even treat pancreatic cancer, which is the worst cancer. Wow. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Unfortunately, cannabis prohibition has made it hard to research all this. We need to get this, we need to just get research, like, let scientists go brazy man and just like fucking crazy going on this research because look what everything i just read just in the leaves just in the leaves then i what i say what have i always said about what's in those leaves there's angels angels in those leaves uh beneficial compounds such as uh cannabinoids terpenes and flavonoids produced by the cannabis plant flavonoids in the entourage effect flavonoids possibly play a role in the entourage effect due to being particularly responsible for the flavor and aroma of the cannabis plant uh, for those who don't know what the entourage effect is, it refers to how different cannabis compounds such as cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids work together to provide more complete effect. This happens because the flavonoids help increase the bioavailability of the cannabinoids in the body, also influence how cannabinoids are transported in your body and how they interact with the cannabinoid receptors. It's all one plant. Entourage effect. Cab cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids. We're going to post this article too because there's some great charts on here you all need to see. Maximizing the benefits of flavonoids. Flavonoids are found in cannabis and other plants and fruits, and they're extremely important as they are responsible for pigmentation of flowers and fruits, but also help plants attract pollinators and fight against bugs. They're still not. Uh, they're still learning some more information. Um, so let's see here. You should opt for the consumption method that delivers the most. That's best for you. Um, and despite not being 100% confirmed, as there is not much research on flavonoids, researchers believe that the best way to maximize flavonoid consumption would be by, by eating cannabis flowers. But why, you ask? Well, smoking a joint or taking a bong hit, for example, exposes flavonoids to fire, which can activate certain flavonoids, but also burn up the others. This means the best way to maximize flavonoids is not to expose them to heat, but edibles oils, and tinctures can also be a great way to consume flavonoids or just make a smoothie. Depending on how you decarboxylate your flour as recommendations to go lower temperature. Remember that temperatures over 75 uh, or 70 to 75 degrees is Celsius can destroy them. So always try to stay below that. Uh, there's still a lot more uh, we need to research about and their benefits. In conclusion, flavonoids are found in most plants, including cannabis, and have a lot of health benefits and can protect you against several conditions. But most of the flavonoids are in the cannabis plant's leaves and branches. Like I said, take those stems and crush them, grind them up, make a tea. So in order a cold brew tea, though. Remember, don't heat it up too hot. In other words, get benefits you should consume. A great way to consume cannabis flavonoids is to mix the leaves in foods and drinks, such as salads and smoothies. I like, you know who likes cannabis leaves more than me? The Yuki. dog. Fucking yeah. loves them. She loves them. I gave her three today. Took the stems off, mm -hmm. uh, but just gave her the leaves. And she just like looks at me for a second and mm -hmm. just gobbles them right up. I don't give her too many, but it doesn't hurt her at all. She 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 gets us some f f f f yeah. flavonoids. So, <laughs> all right, Mrs. Weed Miami. Yeah. Did you learn a little bit about fl f f flavonoids? I did. Nice. 
anxiety. Yeah. All right. Before we go into this, every time I talk to people and I hear them say weed makes me paranoid, weed makes my anxiety go through the roof. Does weed help with it or cause it? What do the experts say, Mrs. Weed yep. Mine? Well, this is a study. Um, so does weed help with anxiety or cause it? Uh, many people smoke cannabis to unwind, but it doesn't always work that way. The effects cannabis can have on mood varies widely, leaving some people calm and content and others anxious and irritable, research shows. The effects of weed can even vary with each experience and may be influenced by how anxious you are when you ingest the drug. A person could smoke or ingest the same amount of cannabis on two different occasions and have two completely different experiences, says Ryan Vanderay, a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Johns Hopkins Medicine. A lot of it could be the baggage you're carrying into the situation, Vandray says. It's really hard to predict. What, so why does cannabis affect people differently? Experts say the type of cannabis, the amount taken, and the way it's used, smoked, vaped, eaten, for example, all determine how it affects the body. Cannabis contains varying levels of different compounds. THC or detra, delta, oh my goodness, <laughs> THC or delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol is the component of cannabis responsible for weeds floaty high, while CBD or cannabidiol appears to work through different receptors in the brain and doesn't result in the same high. We have this way of talking about cannabis as if it's one thing, and it isn't says Stacy Gruber, the director of Marijuana Investigations for Neuroscientific Discovery. It's a program at McLean Hospital in Massachusetts. The plant is unbelievably complex in the most amazing way. The effects of cannabis also vary by how you ingest it. When you smoke or use a vaporizer to inhale cannabis, the drug can metabolize in the body in moments to minutes, Gruber said. It can take 45 minutes or more for someone to feel the effects of an edible, and the time will depend on what's already in your stomach. And not everyone gets the same high. Your age, how frequently you use cannabis, how sensitive you are to THC, and how fast you're able to metabolize the drug all factor into how the drug will affect you. We all differ dramatically. There are so many things that are going to influence how we respond to cannabis, said Brian Adenoff, a clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of Colorado School of Medicine and the president of the advocacy group Doctors for Cannabis Regulation. So how does the level of THC affect anxiety? Well, cannabis has different effects uh, at lower doses than high doses. Generally, low doses of THC are well tolerated, stimulating a release of dopamine, and higher doses of THC can cause people to feel anxious, said Peter Grinspoon, a primary care physician at Massachusetts General Hospital and the author of Seeing Through the Smoke, a book reviewing the latest medical research on cannabis. The main way you can get into mischief with cannabis is by using too high a dose and becoming very, very anxious, said Grinspoon, who's also an instructor at Harvard Med Medical School. There are some patients who can't use it at all, even a tiny bit, because any little bit will make them anxious. Well, your state of mind matters, though. Cannabis affects virtually every neuron connection in the brain, even more so than stimulants such as cocaine and opioids, C -c 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 -cocaine. said Judy Grizel, a professor of psychology at Bucknell University and the author of Never Enough, The Neuroscience and Experience of Addiction. This, in turn, means that cannabis can cause a wide array of reactions depending on the person, she said. It's going to turn up the volume on anything, Grizel said, which is why food tastes better and music sounds better to some people when they're high. Many people swear by the calming effect of weed, but Grizel said there doesn't seem to be a molecular reason why THC would alleviate someone's feelings of anxiety or stress. Instead, people may feel a calming or relaxing effect because the drug can enhance how you're already feeling. If you're using cannabis on a nice, sunny, breezy day, Grizel said, then the weed is going to enhance the mellow, relaxing ambiance. This is also means that 
This also means that for those who are feeling anxious, cannabis may make them more sensitive to stress or prone to paranoia. When you smoke, every synapse is reverberating, which means that everything is boosted, Grizel said. The low level, maybe sub-threshold anxiety that you've been dealing with at work or school or thinking about global climate change or whatever, that stuff is also enhanced. Soraya, a 20-year-old who lives in Georgia, used to smoke cannabis every day when she got off of work. She said she felt like weed helped her unwind, but then a few months ago, cannabis started making her feel worse. Eventually, over time, it started making my heart race, said Soraya. She said it often enhanced her deepest thoughts. If she's sad or anxious, she feels more so when she smokes. Soraya said that she has cut back and wants to find a dose of weed that reliably works to soothe her anxiety. See, wait, so so this is the problem because mm-hmm. she's in, in Georgia. Mm-hmm. It's still illegal in Georgia. I think there's a couple of medical dispensaries just starting to open up, and she's probably getting it from traditional market mm-hmm. that maybe or maybe not know what the strain is or right. what she's buying or how much the THC percentage is and all that stuff. So I, I'm not taking away from traditional market. At all, what I'm saying is though, if she if she knew the strain, the type, how much THC was in it, she can research it and say, hey, that THC is like 28 percent. I need right. like a 13, 12, 10 percent, or or a mix, you know, of CBD a ratio, to a ratio mm-hmm. blend to help me with this. And I've always said, I've been saying this since the beginning when we started this podcast, that cannabis, it's not paranoia as just it enhances your mind thoughts because your mind needs to fix some shit so your mind is trying to help you because the cannabis is trying to help you get it out so it's you just overthinking stuff to the point where now you feel like you're paranoid but you're actually not it's just your brain trying to work some shit out and it's making you anxious too going i'll remind you the other day (laughs) we were driving you're like did i forget to turn off my hair Mm -hmm. straightener and you thought about that for like Till we got home mm-hmm. and you went upstairs and you're like, oh yeah, I did unplug it. But it was on your brain the, yeah, whole, the time. whole time. Right. <laughs> Shoot. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So Soraya said she has cut back and wants to find a dose of weed that reliably works to soothe her anxiety. Now she smokes about twice a week. A majority of the time, I'm not anxious when I smoke, but sometimes it's there. And sometimes it just comes out of nowhere. Um, Keep in mind that anxiety risk is higher for teens. Decades of clinical research have found THC can negatively affect the developing brain, and regular cannabis use in the teen years is associated with a higher likelihood of developing anxiety and depression later in life. Smoking early can catalyze anxiety and depression, Grizel said. It's not exactly clear how this happens, but the evidence for it is very strong. Smoking cannabis regularly for a long period of time will change how your brain responds to the drug, experts say. Frequent and prolonged use may result in a decrease in the number of cannabinoid receptors, which is why people may begin to feel fewer effects of the drug over time. Megan McHugh, a nurse and cannabis educator who also sells her own line of CBD oils and edibles, said the problem is that some people are relying on cannabis as their only tool to manage stress and anxiety. And longtime cannabis users who stop using weed may experience symptoms of withdrawal, including anxiety and depression, because the brain has come to expect the influx of cannabis compounds. All the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you took all the good stuff away. Yeah. All the flavonoids, cannabinoids, and terpenes, Mm -hmm. and the angels. We have the calming effects of CBD. CBD has a similar structure to THC, but it doesn't affect the brain's reward circuitry in the same way, meaning there's less of a risk for abuse, Gruber said. There's a growing body of research supporting that CBD may be able to reduce anxiety or stress. There is increasing evidence that for at least some individuals, there's absolutely some clinical benefit, Gruber said. We certainly need more data, which we're trying very hard to collect. One small study published last year suggests cannabis with equal parts of CBD and THC may induce less anxiety than THC-dominant weed. Danny 
Guild Montes de Vila, a 27-year-old who lives in California and sells cannabis-related products online, said during the work week she usually smokes weed to combat anxiety at the end of the day, often taking a one-to-one -one ratio of CBD to THC. De Vila said she prefers weed to other prescription drugs she takes. I have three prescriptions, she said. I can easily stay the one with the least side effects, and the one where I still feel like me is weed. Um, and it's so important to understand the effects. For some, weed will never be enjoyable, experts say. It's the same reason people don't drink alcohol or caffeine. They just don't like how it makes them feel. There are individuals who will use cannabis and will say it's the only thing that helps them with their anxiety, Vandre says. And there are individuals who will use potentially even the same product and say that was the worst experience of my life. So it's trial and error at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And like you're saying, if it, if you are if you have the luxury of living in a medical state or having a medical card, being in a medical state or at least a good rec state, um, and you, your bud tenders will point you in the direction of things that or will a good work caregiver. Best for you. If you're in a caregiver yep. state or a good home grow state, and yep. they know what they're doing and talking about, I'm not taking away from traditional market at all. But yeah, but if you're in a traditional market, I mean, ask your ask your plug and yeah, you know, do you know do you, you know, know something? What the strain you, is can yeah. I look this strain up? Do you have any idea what I'm the sure THC some percentage who know what is? Most most of the time now they're, they're getting it from <laughs> they're getting a it from, grow. Yeah, right, a so, legal grow. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so you should know. We talked about Keef uh, last episode, so here's another question. Can you dab it? Keef dabs are not really a thing. Shadow, wax, rosin, and, and, and all those other cannabis concentrates are designed specifically for dabbing and vaporizing. Keef, however, is not one of these concentrates. It has not been processed into an oily or waxy material. Therefore, many people wonder how exactly Keef can be dabbed. Well, Keef can actually be dabbed just like other cannabis extracts. You just put it into a hot nail and let it vaporize. Technically speaking, it does work. The issue is that when Keef is not properly processed, there might be some leftover plant matter in it. This can ha leave a bad aftertaste in your mouth and even leave residue in your dab device. On the same note, the plant matter may actually combust instead of being vaporized, which is not something you want. Not only does it leave this residue behind and makes a mess, but it's also uh, not great for your lungs. Furthermore, unlike wax or shatter, keef doesn't melt when it's dabbed. Although, strictly speaking, it is possible, dabbing keef often makes it a bit of a mess. Uh, what are some of the benefits of dabbing keef? It's stronger, uh, less smoke to inhale. Uh, keef dabs may be a little, bit, uh, a little bit healthier, at least when compared to smoking flour, combusting and inhaling Anything just isn't good for your respiratory tract. Although dabbing or vaporizing is not 100% healthy, it's much healthier than smoking. That's this article. I've read stuff that there's tangles on this. So uh, use keef in the gr from the grinder. Uh, what are the potential downsides to dabbing keef? One of the biggest downsides to dabbing keef, it's quite simple, that it makes a mess. It doesn't vaporize properly. It's behind residue, and it's quite a job to clean it up. Furthermore, getting the fine powder into a hot nail in the first place can be a challenge. Don't do it outside. It'll just blow away. You'll probably end up spilling a whole lot of it. Can you make uh, dabs out of keef? Yes, you can make dabs out of keef. Ice, water, hash, or dry sift is made by separating the trichomes from the cannabis plant using cold water. It's then dried and pressed into dabs. Rosin is made from using heat and pressure to squeeze the trichomes out of fresh plant material. Other dabs that te technically contain keef but are being made using different processes such as butane extraction or CO2. Uh, not a fan of C of butane. You've heard me say it. I taste it the moment I the moment I smoke something with butane, and I taste it. Uh, how much keef do you need to make dabs? Uh, a little bit goes a long way. About the size of a quarter uh, of a pea uh, will do just fine if you're just starting out. You won't be able to fit much more in the nail anyway. Uh, how to make dabs from keef? If you want to make a, uh, some wax or shatter from keef, there are a few ways to go about it. The most popular on the market is butane extraction. As mentioned above, this is where the butane is blasted through the cannabis plant matter. The butane absorbs the THC and comes out the bottom. At the time, it needs to be put inside a vacuum chamber and then baked inside an oven. This allows the butane to dissipate, leaving behind a wax or shadow full of THC. However, this process is extremely dangerous and best avoided at home. Yes, please do not do this at home. Please, 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 please don't use, do this at home. I'd rather you see, get uh, some, get, um, go out there and get some, uh, Make uh, ice water bath, cold ice water bath, and buy yourself a rosin press and do it that way. Press your own. It's better anyway. Uh, 
Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. It's a bazillion times better. You, you get all the flavors. You'll get everything out of that thing. Get yourself a press. Trust me. Next best method this year is to make your own rosin. To make rosin out of keef, you're going to use a heat press or even something simple like a hair straightener. Hey. I know, I've known people that have done it. Put your keef inside a 25 micron bag, press it, it between the heated plates, and collect the oil as it comes out. You can also get a bubble bubble bags to create your own ice water hash. Yes, you can. That's the way to go. Look it up. There's probably plenty of videos on how to do it. Uh, final thoughts. So can you dab Keef? The bottom line is you're technically speaking yes. You can dab Keef, and it will be a very potent experience. I like I like just taking my Keef and just putting it in joints or in my bowl. But I don't get a lot of Keef anymore because I don't use my grinder that much anymore. I, I use my scissors. I use my scissors, even though I love my eight decades grinder. I do use my grinder when I'm got to do a lot of joints. Like if I got to roll like five or ten stuff, right. like right. grinding all day long. But if it's just you and I, I just use a, a pair of sh uh, fishing scissors from a, hmm. I bought from a, a fishing store, and just because I I want all of it. I don't want it on my fingers. Someone mentioned this to me on a YouTube video, going, "Why don't you just break it up with your fingers?" Because I want I want everything. I want everything in my bowl or in my joint, so I use a scissor. Um, so go ahead and uh, buy an 8 decades grinder, and then you can collect <laughs> all that keef. <laughs> you can Thanks smoke. for the shameless plug. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> uh, bud tenders, I love them. Love people in cultivation, love bud tenders. Local dispensary bud tenders are the best. You heard me talk about it last uh, on the last episode. I'm going to go a little bit more than that further, but what do you ask when you go to a dispensary? Well, here we go. Walking into a dispensary is an exciting experience. You'll find various cannabis strains and products waiting for you to try. As you enter the shop, you'll be greeted by a bud tender, ready to answer your questions and give recommendations. An experienced bud tender can assist you in finding the best pr cannabis product to try. Whether you're a newbie or a regular user, asking questions is crucial, especially if you're trying a specific strain or potency level for the first time. Here are top things you should ask your dispensary bud tender to help you get the best cannabis, pro cannabis products during your shopping. Uh, what are your best cannabis strains? Starting with the best cannabis strains is one way to establish your demand for quality. When you visit trusted shops, choosing from various top-grade cannabis flowers can be overwhelming. Your local bud tender may offer the best ones based on the following categories. Popularity potency, purity, flavor, and aroma uh, before going to your local. And there, this article is nice. I'll, I'll pin this on the, um, the episode, this article, um, the link, because it goes into like further description of what they, they mean by those categories. Uh, but before going into your local dispensary, one tip is to do some quick research on cannabis strains and find one that you'd love to try. It'll give you a good concrete starting point for your for your shopping. Um, next question for the bud tender: What can you recommend for beginners? If you're a beginner, asking your local dispensary bud tender as many questions as you need is cr is crucial. When you only ask about the best cannabis strains, your bud tender may recommend those with higher potency, which could be risky for new users. Ask your friendly bud tender about the best strains and products for beginners. They may recommend ones with mid-level potency, yet still enjoyable. They may also offer ones with the best flavor and aroma to give you the best possible first-time cannabis experience. Next question, what are your available products? Cannabis dispensaries and local shops offer a wide variety of products aside from various strains of raw flowers. They have cannabis for recreational and medical use, such as buds, edibles, tinctures, dabs, concentrates, and topicals. If you want to consume cannabis in unique ways, asking about their products is a must. As long as you go along, you might as well ask. As you go along, you might as well ask about the following. Well, how to use it. Trying new products through a different consumption method can be tricky without proper instruction. So aside from providing a quick guide, a bud tender may also recommend the best time to use them. Uh, additional tips too. When in a dispensary, ask all questions that come to mind. Ask for expert tips on using products that you're trying for the first time to maximize your experience. And your next question. Well, what are the effects and benefits of the strain? 
Uh, when narrowing down your options, inquire about the effects and benefits. Bud tenders can explain the expected sensation of a particular product, its wellness advantages, and how to maximize them. Inquiring about the effects and the benefits of specific cannabis products can help set expectations, which is crucial for beginners. It can also help you determine if your body can handle it. Knowing the possible outcome can also help you prepare for a new experience mentally. And what are your latest product releases? Regular cannabis users may seek something unique to make their experience more meaningful and beneficial. If you're a connoisseur, trying the latest developments and innovations can offer excitement. Being among the first to try the newest products has pros and cons, though. One benefit is the brand new experience of tasting something that only a few have tried. However, you may also have to prepare for potential disadvantages, such as the risk of disappointment and wasting your money. And ask them if they offer deals and discounts. It's okay to ask. Most dispensaries offer various deals and discounts that you shouldn't miss. So ask your bud tender about the promos and make the most of your budget. Some dispensaries offer referral discounts and rewards programs. Reward can, programs are yeah. fucking huge. Yeah, and you can use <laughs> that. some good ones. Yeah, to save some money and yeah. replenish your stash. Um, some offer memberships that grant you special access to rare products and bestsellers. So uh, ask your local dispensary bud tender many questions, and it can enhance your shopping experience. They prioritize your preferences and needs and offer you the best products to impact your cannabis consumption positively. Whew. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> Maryland, governor signs measures into law permitting adult <laughs> use legalization, so all their stuff is ready to go. Looks like... Uh, Businesses approved additional mar uh, marijuana li business licenses by July 1st of 2024. 300 total retailers to operate in the state. They got to be 500 away from school or child care facility or play playground. Uh, so that's pretty dope. I mean, they're ready to go, Maryland. House Bill 232 provides expanded legal protections for parents who consume cannabis. Bill uh, 1071 reduces the penalty for consuming cannabis in public to a $50 civil fine. It also prohibits police from initiating either a stop or a search of a person if the vehicle is based solely on order of cannabis. Good for you, Maryland. New Mexico's adult use cannabis sales uh, bolstered by tourism. A lot of it coming from Texas, of course. Good for you, New Mexico. Florida uh, marijuana legalization initiative has 94% of the signatures needed to appear in the 2024 ballot. Let's go, Florida. Let's go. Get it done. You can do it. Oklahoma. Uh, all those laws are being changed now because everyone was calling it the wild, wild west and all the illegal grows there. So now Oklahoma growers to pay 50K deposit for license under new law. Trying to stop a lot of that illegal grow when you have like 8,500 cultivators yeah. in one state that I think you only have like like 300, 300, 400,000 med card patients. That's a lot of weed. That's a lot. It's going places. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Oregon Secretary of State resigns amid ethics questions about cannabis consulting work, taking that money from the back end. Bad, bad, bad. Maine's medical cannabis market seeing a mass exodus of caregivers. This is quite sad. And it's because uh, there's just a lot of cannabis and in, in, in for such a low population in Maine. It's a beautiful state, uh, just not a big population for how many people and how many dispensaries and how many caregivers. Is, uh, as of March 31st, there was 2,070 uh, caregivers, according to data, sales data. In 2021, there was 3,032. At its peak in 2016, there was a number 3,257. There's about 106,000 patients with cards that allow them to receive cannabis for medical treatment. It's a lot of caregivers for only 106,000 patients. So the, uh, I think now there's, uh, they lost about 950. So kind of sad because that's a great home business. We One of our very close friends, Big Earl, is a caregiver. You know, um, Missouri. $350 million during the first three months of legalization. That's crazy. 
Jeez. <laughs> People want them Not weeds out in Missouri. There. No, hell no. Washington State opened its doors to interstate cannabis com- commerce, and we just talked about another state doing that last week. But, of course, they're waiting till it turns federally legal. So I got my hopes up. I was all excited. But, yeah, they're going to wait until it... Um, it's passed through con- uh, through Washington before they uh, before they go interstate with it. So, but it's ready to go. So when it happens, they're going to be one of the first to be able to do it. This is sad because I want North Carolina to go med and rec so bad and be- allow home grow twelve plants caregiver. I rather them do caregiver programs and 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 do it that way. But the uh, the Cherokee chief vetoes sixty four million dollar for medical cannabis superstore, and uh, I guess they were way over budget like close to like 95 million. So it was kind of getting kind of deep and crazy on the kind of money they, they had to spend to get this all up and going. But they're, they're able to do it on tribal land. So North Carolina couldn't say anything. And I would have loved for this to happen. It would have been great. So $95 million. Who, yeah, the fact that this project really cost for an outdoor grow and indoor grow and an indoor dispensary was $50 million, And now we're being told it's $95 million, demonstrates that there was immediate need for the full accounting of the money that has been expanded to date. Uh, this uh, Sneed wrote, who, uh, so yeah, so they were way over budget. So the uh, tribal leader nixed it. Hmm. So that's sad. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they could fix it and maybe, I don't know, figure Get it out. Yeah. Pennsylvania lawmakers filed bill to legalize cannabis sales through state run stores. They do the same thing with liquor there, too, in the state of Pennsylvania, the state run stores. Why does it have to only be, why does, why does any, why does the state deserve anything? Why does, the f- all you states taking all this tax money who've all- and for for so long you arrested people you you the drug over trillions of do- a trillion dollars spent on the drugs uh, uh, mm-hmm. against uh, war against drugs all you states arresting people money money putting people in jail for for low level cannabis crimes just whatever you've done what gives you the right to sell it through a state run store fuck you and I like Pennsylvania too the people there are great but damn you that's just wrong. Ohio, Ohioans move closer to putting cannabis legalization on November ballot, and it's going to pass, so they say. We'll see. Insurance policies. Yep. Can't live without them. No, you can't. It fucking sucks, but you can't live without them. So uh, our, our daughter O-Dog got hit with a car, and the person didn't have insurance. Sucks. So you need insurance. Can you get an insurance policy, though, Uh uh can it prevent you from getting insurance policy if you smoke cannabis, smoke weeds? Well, this is specifically about life insurance policies. So in Stanton Island, New York, certain medical and mental health conditions, <clears throat> occupations, age, and even your driving record can be reasons for a life insurance company to deny coverage. Another factor, certain lifestyle choices, including smoking weed. According to insure.com, because weed is illegal at the federal level, Many life insurance companies consider weed smokers as high risk and may charge you a high premium. Some insurance companies may offer competitive rates to weed smokers as more and more states legalize recreational weed, while others may still see you as a liability and deny your coverage. Insure.com said one factor is whether you smoke weed medically or recreationally, how often you consume weed, and how you consume it whether you smoke it, vape it, or consume it with edibles. If you use weed medicinally, the health condition you're using it for, because insurance companies consider your health when determining approval, denial, and your rates, it can also have an impact. While some insurance companies will only ask if you smoke during your application process, other insurance companies require a medical exam and a drug test, which screens for weed. However, if you have an existing life insurance policy and then you begin smoking weed, the insurance company cannot cancel your policy or change your rates because of use. If you lie about your weed use or any lifestyle or health information on your application, it can be rejected, canceled at the later time, or considered insurance fraud, according to insure.com. While weed smokers still have a chance of getting life insurance, it's much harder for workers in the weed industry, Insure.com reported. If you work in the cannabis industry, most insurance companies will reject your life insurance application, regardless of where you live and work. While marijuana is legal on some level in the majority of the U.S., it is not legal federally. 
which prevents most insurers from offering policies to workers in the cannabis industry. Anyone in any illegal occupation will see their application denied, the report said. Hmm. That's shitty. Yeah, it's really shitty. I didn't get denied. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And we had to have exams with our, yeah, with our life insurance. Yeah, I didn't get denied. They must have liked me. Hmm. We got lucky. <laughs> International news. In Luxembourg, state cannabis sales will not be implemented in current legislative period. Government ministers present a new pilot project for the introduction of recreational cannabis sales points on Friday, although the bill will not appear in the Chamber of Deputies in the legislative period. Minister Claude Miche, Paul, uh, Paulette, Lenart, and Sam Tannison presented a new bill which would lead to the installation of 14 state sale points around the country as part of the recreational cannabis pilot project. Consumers would be able to purchase up to 5 grams a day or 30 grams a month with two government production licenses to be awarded. However, the pilot project has not been established in legal text and is expected to be presented in the EU Commission soon. It is not yet known when it is due to start, although it is thought it will take place in the next parliamentary period. So the bill is growing up f up to four cannabis plants at home. There you go. However, has been has been improved and is likely to be pushed through the part of the first phase. This project is currently being considered by the state council to be put in chamber vote for the next parliamentary election. Go ahead, make it 12 plants. France is Europeans champion smoking le refer. 11% <laughs> of French people have smoked cannabis in the past 12 months, more than anywhere else in Europe. Malta is the only other country in Europe where weed is totally illegal, but many others tolerate it or allow it medical use. As the average age of users increase, it may be only a matter of time before the cool kids stop using it entirely. The French are European champions in smoking Le Refer, as this map shows 11% of French people aged 18 to 64 have used cannabis in the past 12 months. That's more than anywhere else in Europe, although Spain and Monaco, 10.5%, uh, Italy and Croatia, 12.2%, and Netherlands, 10.1%, come pretty close. Those high numbers are remarkable in contrast to some of the continent's lowest results, mainly in Eastern Europe. Barely 1 in 100 Turks, Kovacians, and Hungarians had used cannabis in the previous 12 months, with Serbians, Ukrainians, Bulgarians, Lithuanians, and Greeks also reporting results below 3%. Finns are the regional uh, cannabis champions in Scandinavia, with a share more than double that neighboring Sweden. Similarly, Spain doubles Portugal's percentage. Larry for Madness. The data on this map is a couple of years old, but a study published in December last year shows their overall figure for cannabis use in France has remained fairly stable at 10.6%, within 47.3% have tried it at least once in their lives. According to Mr. Uh, Spicola, reduced cannabis use among young people is closely linked to the drop in cigarette smoking, which is ushering in a behavioral change in younger generations. Perhaps cost is also a factor. The retail price of cannabis has increased by more than 25% in just 10 years. In 2011, a gram of cannabis would have cost 750 euros. In 2020, that had increased by $10. By comparison, cumulative inflation was only about 10% over the same period. Is there a correlation between cannabis use and its legal status? That's hard to tell, as most countries practice some degree of practical leniency rather than official uh, approval. In contrast to the wave of legalization in the U.S., cannabis use remains illegal in all countries of Europe except one, Malta. The Maltese government legalized cannabis use in December 2021, but under strict conditions. Germany is now also moving forward uh, towards legalization. The Netherlands is famous for its relaxed attitude towards it, which is, can be acquired freely in coffee shops, yet the sale and use of cannabis is, is merely tolerated, not legalized. In various other countries across Europe, cannabis has also been decriminalized, not yet legal, but no longer a police matter. However, cannabis used for medical purposes have been approved in wide ranges of countries from Ireland, Romania to Portugal and Finland. As the map on this shows, two countries are conspicuous by their absence, Spain and France, where cannabis consumption is especially high, at least for now. As the average age of cannabis users increase, the cool kids may turn away from this old people drug. Perhaps cannabis will become legal across Europe, just as it falls out of fashion. Man, cannabis will always be cool. Always be cool. <laughs> all the cool kids and all the cool adults, adults and everybody that uses it is cool. So just, you know, it's, that, it's not a young thing. It's not an old person thing. It's not a middle-aged thing. Cannabis is for everybody. 
So the only thing I don't like about this article is where they're trying to separate it. It's not for young or old. It's not being cool. Cannabis is not being cool. Just smoke cannabis. Because cause the plant is cool. <laughs> Makes you feel good. <laughs> Has all the flavonoids, cannabinoids, and terpenes in it. That's right. So it's for everybody. There's angels in those leaves. This was put on the planet Earth for a reason. It's a gift. I said this a million times. It's a gift. It's not just cool for old people, for young people. It's for everybody. This plant is for everybody. So, But La French smoke a lot of weed. Good. They should just legalize it then. Let people home grow. Just pass it around. Just like you do your fine wine and your cheese. Right? Right. Movies. We love a good stoner movie, don't we, Mrs. Weed Man? We do. <laughs> we really do. Explain them to me, <laughs> will you? I'm trying to still understand them. <laughs> All right. What a stoner movie is explained. So, like, what quantifies it as being one, right? Uh, stoner films are a classic comical thing. And when they feature Canada's experts like Cheech and Chong or Snoop Dogg, the content reaches an all-time high. Though smoking in a movie theater is highly illegal, there are some films that could definitely influence fans to do so. From joints to bongs and one-time tokes, from smoking marijuana in film never ceases to, be, to bring comedic relief. Producers even go as far as calling in some of the most frequent users, like rappers Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa, who both have their own THC brand, to enliven the spirit of weed and its etiquette in film. Making smoke scenes believable takes a, re takes a relatable knowledge of how weed affects an individual. Knowing that everyone doesn't share the same experience while high is essential to creating cannabis movies. This also creates humorous scenes full of delinquency and self-expression. Since smoking weed is primarily illegal in many states, the quality of weed material has to be better than intended. As for those who play the role of a stoner, educating while indulging is also somewhat necessary, and films like Mac and Devon Go to High School embody this balance very well. This particular stoner film features a 15-year-old student, Mac, played by Snoop Dogg, and Devon, an academically strong student, played by Wiz Khalifa. Though Devon wants to be the valedictorian of his class, Mac safely guides him through smoking for the first time and many times after. Throughout the film, a talking animated joint named Slow Burn educates viewers on the different types of highs, saying that edibles play ping pong with your brain. The hilarious, hilarious reality of what occurs when Mac and Devon are high is worth the watch. The duo is set to start together in a Mac and Devon Go to High School sequel, though no release date has been confirmed. You'll want to get your lighters ready for this one because they're coming back ten times stronger, like a hit of OG Kush after a tolerance break. <laughs> <laughs> now there's no getting past talking about stoner movies without mentioning How High, with another pair of cannabis connoisseurs, Method Man as Silas and Red Man, uh, Redman as Jamal. I think They're, it's Silas. Silas. Silas and Jamal. They are tasked with passing their college qualification test called the THCs, a parody of the SATs, <laughs> both attempting to smoke in the parking lot before, join, before going inside to take the test. But Jamal is missing the weed, and Silas has nothing to smoke out of, making the perfect plot for a friendship to grow. However, things get psychedelic when the ghost of Silas's friend Ivory visits them. After all, Silas did use the man's ashes as fertilizer when potting the weed he and Jamal were smoking. Through the film, the friends attend college and spark up as frequently as possible. Ivory continues to visit them and helps them achieve good grades by giving them all the answers to their exams. Only people who smoke the strain can see and hear Ivory. How High, followed by its sequel, How High 2, starring Little Yachty and DC Youngfly, are top-tier weed movies, like a bag of overpriced runts from your local plug. If ever there was a comparison of weed strains to movies, Cheech and Chong would reign as the ultimate jet fuel to your stoner likability. With eight movies to its saga, two friends, Cheech and Chong, who transitioned into the film industry in 1978, after about a 10-year run as stand-up comedians, blazed through the expectations of marijuana in film. 
Their passion for the plant is highlighted through multiple scenarios like smoking and wild strains that turn people into lizards in nice dreams <laughs> or experimenting with multiple drugs among oddball characters and up in smoke. They relentlessly run into trouble throughout the franchise films, resulting in residual laughter and making their many sequels perfect for all 420 activities. Another iconic stoner film is Seth Rogen and James Franco's Pineapple Express. Um, it's a paranoid adventure all over a city escaping the police. The film is a classic. Uh, perhaps one of the most classic uh, stoner movies, though, is Half-Baked, yes. where Dave Chappelle and his three buds take smoke sessions to the next level, from popcorn to graham crackers, pizza cereal, and, of course, Funyuns. The group of burnouts knows exactly how to make a munchies run. They have bongs, blunts, bowls, and more. And when nobody can get their work done, all thanks to being high, the friends turn to dealing instead. Though they've stolen the product, the local drug lord becomes aware of their success and he blackmails them for 20 grand a week. <laughs> There's love, jail, and just about any antic that could arise while under the influence. What's more, Chappelle's presence is enough insurance that this is a dope comedy that ends in laughter and is sure to put you in the mood to smoke until the clouds are your pillows. And though film could definitely use another Harold and Kumar movie where the duo toke their way through multiple sequels, stoner film fans will just have to throw on a Cheech and Chong marathon while they wait the next release of chronic smokable content. <laughs> yeah, there Love. hasn't been anything in a while, right? No, nothing like that's been mind blown. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's so many good stoner movies and, and just movies to get baked on to watch. I mean, it's just the list goes on and on from the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, those were some of the classics, 90s. So good. Oh, <laughs> there was something before we uh, say goodbye. There was something I talked about last week, and this was uh, the bud tenders uh, picketing, you know, going on strike. I didn't get a chance to finish my thoughts because there was so much to still talk about. So how do you how do you fix this? How do you fix the people in cultivation and the, and the people in dispensaries to make sure they get paid right, to make sure the stores and the cultivation are making money and to keep employees, to make sure they, they have a good paying job where they have benefits, they have insurance, maybe even get a pension. Uh, how do you do this? And especially, like, I, I'm not taking it out on the dispensaries or the cultivation, you know. Uh, but sometimes I am. And I want to say I'm sorry because dispensaries and cultivation, the owners of these companies, some of them are mom and pop shops that I respect the hell out of, you know, took everything they, they had, doubled mortgage to be able to open this kind of stuff up, and they do their best to take care of their employees. Because I've met a lot of good, good mom and pop shops, too, that had really happy employees because they loved working for, they loved working in the industry, but they also loved the people they worked for. And that's great. And I love to see that. How do we get better? So people can make the kind of money like they do in, in union jobs. And I blame it on the States. And I, and I, and I do, I have to, because instead of taking so much in taxes and doing whatever the hell you want to do with it, let the stores have it back and pay their employees better. Or then you should start a pension fund with that $604 million, Illinois, you made last year. And all you other states, California in the billions, you know, some of these states are making a billion dollars. Take 20% of that and start a pension fund for people in cultivation, for people in dispensary work, so they get a good living and they could stay and work and, and give that money back to some of the dispensaries so they have higher pay and they can make long-term careers out of it. The cannabis industry is going to need workers. There's 500,000, 600,000 cannabis employees now, maybe 500,000 if my number, last time I checked and it's only going to keep on growing. So that's, you know, and people want to stay in the industry because they're passionate about some of the best people I've ever met are, are butt tenders and people in cultivation and managers of dispensaries and owners of dispensaries. And those are the people I love to hang out with and smoke fucking big doinks with and have a good time and eat edible with and get some laughs. And they're, they're my kind of people, you know, and I want to see them make long-term careers out if they want to. And how you do that is, is t 
fighting the states for taking all this money that they don't they don't deserve when they personally just damned weed for how many years and now they're just bankrolling it and we're letting this happen we as the as people that use cannabis and and the cannabis peeps around the world we are letting this happen the government now when they were stealing from the traditional market and putting it in their pockets are now just take just blatantly just taking it out in the tax and calling it a tax i mean the illinois taxes is ridiculous there's no reason why they should be taking in 600 million dollars a year for taxes that needs to be paid to the people in the industry and also mom and pop shops that own one shop that can't afford it okay so i blame the states and i apologize i didn't go into this more last time and i'll still go into this more i'd love to have somebody talk but start your own union don't go to all these other unions. Start your own cannabis union across the country. And I, I've had, I was sitting one night, Stony Baloney, thinking about all the ways someone can start a union and, and protect the cannabis industry, cultivation, even the transporter, that's, transporter licenses that are coming out now that people can buy transportation licenses and all the industry and as a whole needs to be protected, you know, not just from the seed, but there's a lot of people outside that do a lot of stuff. So... I blame you, the states, for not taking care of the people that are taking care of people that are taking care of people. Shame on you for only thinking of yourself. So, um, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. Got anything else to say? Uh, I just hope everyone has a fantastic week. I'm really high. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm on the downside. I'm feeling like... I need to smoke some. We're going to smoke another joint. Can yeah. you an edible for, before but bed? But I'm right on board with you. Those bud tenders, they they need the support. And I understand the fight that they're trying to fight. And yeah. Yeah. Cultivation, too. I mean, there's people yeah. like that, that. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. The uh, non-owners, basically. Yeah. And even like I said, even some of the owners, too, that are just mom and pop shops that right. are getting raped right. on taxes. They, can't, they have yeah. one shop that took everything they had, Yeah, you know, and they're paying and they 30, can't make 40% it percent right. in some form of a tax, you know? It's crazy. Yeah, I think it's just absolutely horseshit. I don't think any 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 government or any state or any should take more than 3% from it, and the rest should go to the people. Better pricing, better industry standards, better protection for the workers, insurance, health insurance, all that money being going back to get, the, get programs for the people who don't even probably can't get it because they can't afford it. And I know these dispensaries can't afford the smaller, like mom and pop shops, probably can't afford to give back to their employees like that. So it could be a way better industry. Mm -hmm. Like it could be one of the best industries ever. You know, look at the alcohol industry. Right. You know, look at the the distributors industry and the wholesaler industry. Now, small independent liquor stores don't have the kind of options like the big chains do. But you know, it could be better all around. So I don't know. Just my thoughts. My stoner thoughts of the before we close the show out. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> hey, everybody out there in the world, we love you. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, Mr. Weedman's uh, Instagram got hacked. I'm now Weedman420 Chronicles 2.0. Or you can catch me at the, at the Grow Hour, too. Started one of those, too. So either one. Come join me. Say hello. I miss you all out there. All the people I had on there, I miss you. I miss all my DMs and talking to people all the time. So get back with me and let's have some fun and conversation. So uh, we love you all out there, though. Appreciate you listening as always. As Paulie always says, smoke smart. Puff and away. Puff, puff, puff. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canic community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.